Hello class, I wanted to take a moment to go over some of the areas of um, dealing with bonds that may very well be um, may create some challenges for you. Um, when we went through the last, I would say, um, presentation, we talked about bonds, we went over a, a good amount of information on the different terminology, what are bonds, how they're recorded, and going over terms like um, discounts and, and premium and all of that. But there are times when you're, you may be asked to uh, compute the amount of the bonds, the bonds that um, for a transaction given some information. You're going to be able to use present value concepts in order to calculate what the actual cost of that bond is for an issuing organization. We talked about the effective interest method, we talked about straight line method, and we use those terms to um, determine how we would amortize a premium or a discount. Here we want to talk about present value co um, concepts as it relates to pricing of bonds. Now remember, a bond is going to be issued either at its face or at a premium, which is higher than its face, or at a discount, lower than its face. But it comes down to what an investor is willing to pay for it. And yes, a person who holds a bond is an investor. They're investing in this organization by, by lending them money at a price, in this case, interest. So pricing bonds is going to be a significant computation, and it's important to understand some concepts when we're going to deal with our questions in your homework dealing with that. So periodic interest is going to be the rate of in the interest that is going to be paid on the bonds. So if the bond has a coupon rate of 12% and if the bonds are um, issued at par of $100,000, interest is going to be $100,000 multiplied by the 12% times six months out of the year, essentially. Now, knowing these terms are going to be important. Now, again, the market rate of interest. We are all, well, we very well know that the coupon rate or the contract rate can often differ from the market rate. And when there are differences, you're going to have either a premium or a discount. Whether the, the, the market rate is higher than the, the contract rate, you have a discount. If the market rate is lower than the, um, than the contract, you're going to have a premium. So knowing that information is going to be important and, and knowing whether it's a discount or a premium is important even before you start the calculations. So that's very important as well. So the investor is going to really be the one that's going to, the investor is how much am I willing to pay for it? I'm not, I'm not willing to pay for this bond. Um, and that's going to really determine that. So the bond's future cash receipts is going to include the face amount plus any periodic interest payments. That's very much important thing to know. So how do we determine what that is? We have to present value those numbers. So for example, $100,000 of a bond is going to be the future value. That is how much you're going to pay in 30 years or 5 years or 15 years. But today, if you were to pay... 12% of that 100,000 at six at um, six months out of the year, that's going to be the present value. That's what it is now. So when we're dealing with these concepts, it's important to know where these numbers lie in the timeline scheme of things. So if we're talking about what is in the future, we need to take that future number and bring it back to the present. If we're talking about our present amount, which is the interest that's going to be paid to you, we want to be able to take that number and extend it out to the future. And that's important to know because if you want to be able to calculate how much that bond is valued at one point in time, you need to be able to discount the, the future value to a present value and take that present value and move it forward to the future value and add the two together to come up with what the price or the cost of that bond is. And that's what really causes the confusion with students because you're dealing with present value when it comes to the interest. And you're dealing with future value when it comes to the principal amount, which is the bond maturity value. So present value is going to be the current worth of a future sum of money or a stream of cash flows. So let's make sure we get clear. The amount of money that is going to be paid to the bondholder every six months is called a series of payments, like an annuity. You're going to get 12% of the $100,000 every six months. That's going to be a stream of payments. So that's going to be a series of cash flows over a period of time. The amount of money that's going to be paid out in the form of that bond principal, that's a future value. You are going to owe that $100,000 three years from now, five years from now, or 30 years from now, depending on the indenture. So the concept of time value is going to be able to recognize what money we receive today is going to be worth a little bit more in the future. 
So we're going to be able to take these numbers and discount them forward or backwards, depending on what they are, to determine what the value of our bond is and how it should be presented on the financial statements. So the present value of amount, present value of a dollar is used to define the amount of a factor. Now what, you're, what we're talking about here is we need to be able to use our formula to be able to determine what that present value of that item is. So if we have a future value, we don't want to calculate the future value because we already know it. We want to take the future value and discount it back to know what the present value, what it is worth right now. So, so we want to be able to find out. So we're using that table to determine what the value of a future amount is. So present value of an annuity, we talked about that. Whenever there is going to be an equal amount of cash receipts over a period of time, it's called an annuity. Every payment that's made in the form of interest every six months is an annuity. That's going to be a series of payments to be made over the life of that bond indenture. So you're going to be calculating the present value of an annuity. You're going to be calculating the present value of a dollar. A dollar is a single payment. One payment that's going to be made at the end of the term. In the case of my example, $100,000. So when you think about that, it gives you the two tables that you'll need to use when you're calculating what the price of a bond is. If the future value is $100,000 in 30 years, and it's going to be paid over equal amount of time, we want to know the present value of that $1. If we have a series of payments in IE interest payments two times out of the year, we want to be able to multiply and determine what is going to be the value of those series of payments in the future. So let's think about that. So pricing the bonds is going to have some components involved. It's going to be the face amount of the bonds due at maturity, and it's going to be the periodic interest. And the periodic interest in the examples that we've had before is going to be the 100000 times the coupon rate times the time, in this case, six-month period. But the market rate is going to be used to compute the present value on both the face and the periodic interest. So when you're looking at these bonds and you've got your interest dollar amount already computed, you're going to be using, when you're looking at your tables, you're going to be using the market rate when you're calculating the price of the bonds. So the effective interest method is going to be amortizing at a constant rate of interest over the life of the bond. Now again, the effective rate of interest is going to be considering what the market rate is and what the disc or the coupon rate is and that difference is what's going to be, and it's, it's, it's really a, a very simple calculation but the most important thing is we're trying to match what we are going to receive and more accurately um, calculate the interest that's amortized because we're taking in consideration not only the constant rate of interest but we're also considering the market rate and that difference between the two of those because it's only when those two differ that this really when this method really has a material difference in the amortization of a discount or premium so the interest rate is going to be interest rate is going to be used in the effective interest method when we're talking about how to calculate the amortization. We're always going to be dealing with the carrying amount of the value of the of the bond. What is the carrying amount? The carrying amount is almost the same as using the word book value. In this case, it's going to be if we are talking about a a a, um, a bond at a discount. Like in our last example, it was like $96,400 and the bond's maturity value was 100000 That difference of $3,400 or $500 is to be amortized over the period of time. That difference, that 100 minus that 35, giving you that 90 something thousand, that 90 something thousand is the carrying amount of that bond. And that carrying amount is going to go up and up and up and up and up as you amortize that discount. If it's in, a, in contrast, if you have a premium that's a hundred and um, you have a, a bond that's at a premium and you're, you're paying or you're receiving a hundred and six thousand for a hundred thousand dollar bond, every time you amortize that premium um, is going to go lower and the carrying value in such cases is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller until it matches the face value of the bond, whereas the bond discount is going to get higher and higher and higher until it reaches the face value of that bond. So the difference between the interest expense and the interest payment is the amount of the discount or premium. Now what does that mean? Let's, let's think about this. When you calculate your interest expense, you're going to be using the market rate, right? But the interest payment is going to be based on the coupon rate. 
And this only matters when there's a diff when the rates are different. So when the rates are different, so you calculate your hundred thousand times your market rate, which is twelve percent in our example, and then you calculate your interest that's going to be paid to your bondholders at hundred thousand times the ten percent, and the difference between these two interest expense calculation is going to be the amortization or the amount to be amortized and that's going to be the interest method or the effective interest method again calculating the interest expense using the market rate of interest and then you calculate the cash paid to your bondholders which is the coupon value or the face amount of the bond times the coupon rate and those two numbers are going to be subtracted from one another and that's going to give you what the amortization for that period Thank you very much for listening and I'm hopeful that this particular narrative gives you some idea of how to approach your questions or problems with effective interest method and amortization as well as pricing those bonds.